Hi, good morning everybody. My name is Daud. Welcome to Cambridge Orthopaedics. Today we'll be talking about the modified Gibson approach and the GANS trochanteric osteotomy. As before, we'll go through the indications for the approach, patient positioning, skin inc incision, superficial and deep dissection, and finally closure. So firstly, what are the indications for the modified Gibson approach? Well, it provides uh, excellent uh, uh, access to the posterior acetabulum, uh, and particularly for those acetabular fractures that extend slightly more anteriorly than uh, the Cocker-Langenbeck approach would otherwise allow you to access. It also is useful for those acetabular fractures that extend above the sciatic notch, as the modified Gibson approach uh, allows you to safely dissect out the superior gluteal neurovascular bundle. And in the same way, it's really useful for those complex revision hip arthroplasties, where you need to access the bone above the sciatic notch to secure uh, in a cage uh, similar to the structure um, you can see in the image on the right. It is also a great uh, approach for uh, the management of femoral head fractures uh, and uh, the modified Gibson approach combined with the Ganstrochanteric osteotomy uh, is the approach that we'll be talking about uh, in this uh, talk. So in terms of patient positioning, uh, the patient is in a lateral position for me using a Jackson table and a bean bag. Uh, it's important to keep the bean bag attached to the suction uh, throughout the whole procedure. And I use a seat belt or a strap uh, over the patient to ensure uh, that he's firmly secured uh, to uh, the table. Uh, in terms of the skin incision, the bony landmarks uh, include the femoral shaft, uh, the GT tip uh, at the front. Uh, the bony landmark is the anterior superior iliac spine and the posterior superior iliac spine at the back. The skin incision for the modified Gibson approach is a straight incision. It can start from the iliac crest and go all the way down to the uh, femoral shaft. And the reason why the straight incision is so useful is demonstrated in this image here, uh, showing you uh, that it's much easier to identify the anterior edge of gluteus uh, maximus uh, with this small straight incision. Uh, moving on to the superficial dissection, which is the modified Gibson bit of the approach. Uh, this image demonstrates the fascial incision needed for a more standard posterior approach or a, or a cocker langenbeck approach. Um, but for the modified Gibson approach, we want to be slightly more anterior on the gluteus maximus muscle. Uh, and so whilst the, uh, in, uh, the distal uh, incision in the fascia is similar, uh, with the modified Gibson approach, the fascial incision uh, needs to be slightly more anterior uh, to uh, fully uh, uh, dissect out uh, the anterior border of the gluteus maximus. And so this uh, surgical image demonstrates uh, uh, this uh, Z step that I do uh, to ensure that I'm anterior enough uh, to uh, identify the anterior border of gluteus maximus. And why is this important? Well, you want to uh, develop this plane between the gluteus maximus and the gluteus medius, which is a true internervous plane, which, and which is why it's so extensile. Uh, uh, and these two muscles, as you know, are supplied by different nerves, and you want to uh, then develop this plane between these two muscles. This image demonstrates the forceps holding on to the anterior border of gluteus maximus uh, and uh, you can then use a knife to carefully dissect out that uh, plane between gluteus maximus and gluteus medius all the way up to the uh, iliac crest. This image demonstrates to you why this uh, modified Gibson approach is so extensile because if you dissect um, uh, out uh, in front of the gluteus maximus muscle, you can go all the way up to the iliac crest without compromising any of the blood supply. Whereas if you were to use a more standard Cocker-Langenbeck approach, you would uh, be limited proximally uh, by some of the branches of the superior gluteal artery. Uh, I routinely take out the gluteus maximus insertion to give me more uh, exposure, uh, and this can be repaired at the end of the operation.
so the next is uh, the deep uh, dissection, uh, which is uh, about uh, how you safely surgically uh, uh, dislocate the hip. Uh, and firstly, I want to start off by uh, demonstrating why it uh, shouldn't be done uh, with a posterior hip dislocation. And the key player here is the medial circumflex femoral artery, which as you know, runs along the inferior border of obturator externus uh, in the short external rotators uh, and uh, forms uh, a key uh, blood vessel uh, to the supply of um, blood to the femoral head. And so if you can imagine internally rotating the hip and progressively posteriorly dislocating the hip like you would do in a total hip replacement through a posterior approach, you are at, one po at some point reach uh, uh, um, the uh, limit uh, to the, the stretch of the medial circumflex femoral artery and, and it eventually rips, uh, thereby compromising the blood supply to the femoral head. So it is not uh, appropriate to do a posterior dislocation uh, in this scenario. And so um, the safest way to perform a surgical hip dislocation is through an anterior hip dislocation. And, and uh, the way to do this uh, is by performing a GANS trochanteric osteotomy where you can release the abductor mechanism uh, anteriorly to be able to anteriorly dislocate the hip. The key to the GANS trochanteric osteotomy is to ensure that your abductor mechanism is continuous. So that's formed by the gluteus medius attached to the greater trochanter, attached to the vastus lateralis. And if those three structures are still in continuity, then you're going to be okay. So if you look at the image on the right, um, you have two osteotomy lines A and B. A for me is a little bit too close to the insertion of vastus lateralis. Uh, and both are really a little bit too close to the um, uh, joint capsule and, and to the uh, superior retinacular vessels, uh, which you want to try and avoid damaging. And so um, the uh, optimum uh, osteotomy position is just behind the gluteus uh, medius uh, at the uh, GT tip uh, and extended slightly more distally to keep the vastus lateralis insertion uh, preserved. So you have an intact uh, abductor mechanism uh, at the end. Uh, so I use a step uh, uh, osteotomy. This helps me to um, uh, reduce the uh, osteotomy uh, more easily at the end. I use a handheld oscillating saw and some fine osteotomes to complete my uh, osteotomy. Uh, once you've completed your osteotomy, you can retract the trochanteric fragment anteriorly and using diathermy, you'll have to take uh, uh, off some of the attachments of vastus lateralis onto the, on the proximal femur in order to uh, um, uh, retract that trochanteric fragment anteriorly. Uh, and also, um, you'll find that you'll often have to take off some of the gluteus minimus insertion uh, uh, demonstrated here with a knife or, or a diathermy to really uh, affect uh, anterior um, retraction of the trochanteric fragment. Uh, with that uh, retracted anteriorly and the hip externally rotated, you'll be presented with the hip capsule. And at this point, there are two areas that you need to be careful of. Firstly, you need to be careful of the labrum. Uh, and secondly, you need to be careful of the superior retinacular vessels, which we've talked about already, uh, supplying the femoral uh, uh, head. Uh, and, um, and and these are the considerations you need to you need to take uh, for making your capsulotomy, and this is why it's recommended that you do a Z capsulotomy as demonstrated here to avoid those uh, uh, areas. And uh, it's really important to uh, plan this. Uh, uh, before the, the case, because intraoperatively, you can sometimes be a little bit disorientated. Uh, so it's, it's make sure that you are well prepared to make this Z, Z capsulotomy and avoiding damage to the labrum and the superior retinacular vessels. Uh, this uh, uh, anatomical specimen just demonstrates again the um, importance of performing a careful Z capsulotomy. Uh, so this area shaded in red is the superior retinacular uh, vessel entering the femoral head. This area shaded in green is the labrum. And your Z capsulotomy really need to, needs to avoid these structures 
uh, uh, to ensure a good outcome uh, for the patient. Uh, this uh, anatomical study just again highlights the importance of the superior retinacular vessel. Uh, so if you damage that vessel, then you really do compromise the blood supply to the femoral head. Whereas if you damage the inferior retinacular vessels, uh, this uh, compromise to the femoral head is less uh, dramatic. So now you need to, as you would do in a hemiarthroplasty, uh, put the leg in a leg bag uh, and uh, dislocate the hip. Uh, you get a really good uh, view of the femoral head uh, and you may need to take off the ligamentum teres uh, to, to get it dislocated. And at this point, you can uh, affect a reduction of your Pipkin fracture and secure that with screws. Um, and uh, the final stage is the closure. Uh, and, um, and this is really important to ensure that you um, uh, securely fix your uh, osteotomy. Uh, as I said, the Z step uh, or the step osteotomy makes it slightly easier to reduce the fracture. I use a pointy reduction uh, uh, clamp, uh, not a fracture, but the osteotomy. I use a pointy reduction clamp to reduce this. And then I use uh, 3.5 millimeter screws uh, with or without washers uh, to secure this in place. It's important to do that carefully so that you don't fracture your trochanteric fragment because that would be uh, problematic. This is a post-op x-ray demonstrating um, headless screws in uh, the head for the Pipkin fracture and then three 3.5mm uh, screws securing the uh, osteotomy in place. Uh, and it's also important to ensure that you check the um, labrum so uh, you can uh, uh, check the labrum using a probe uh, and if there are any uh, uh, avulsions of the labrum then uh, you can use a bony anchor, a suture anchor to uh, secure them uh, uh, that back in place. And then um, it's important to repair the capsule with sutures uh, uh, and uh, a standard closure uh, for uh, the fascia uh, and the uh, subcutaneous tissue and skin. Uh, so that's the modified Gibson approach and GAN's trochanteric osteotomy. I uh, hope that was useful and um, see you again soon. Thanks.